Nissan advise the diesel fuel filter is drained of water every 12,000 miles or every 12 months and that it's replaced every 24,000 miles or every two years, whichever comes first. This is a rough guide as it does vary depending upon driving conditions. Other than a new fuel filter, you'll need the following to change that filter. 7 and 8mm sockets for the Jubilee clips, 10mm socket for the two housing nuts, some long nose pliers for a spring clip, and you have a choice of two filters. One requires that you supply the end cap and it's a large diameter hole, and the other one comes with its own drain tap at the end. So here you can basically see what you'll need to do a diesel fuel filter change. I'll start here with the Bosch. This is N4281, and it's the particular filter which has the large diameter hole at the bottom. And you need to supply that cap, so it should be on your old filter. If it's not there, then you might need to use the other filter. But this is the cap. It screws in like that and it's got a little water drain on the bottom. You will also need to replace this rubber seal, which is quite important. So, or you may have this type of filter, which is basically self-contained. This is the Blueprint ADN12322. And this one has its own sort of little water drain there on the end. And there's a little rubber seal in there. So that's a more simple type of filter. So to remove the fuel pipe, we will need a 7mm socket. Or you can use one of these long ones with like a flexible shaft. And we'll also need to remove the air filter. And so for this clip, we'll need an 8mm socket. So there's four clips that hold the filter housing in place and that one Jubilee clip there. And then getting to the point of removing the filter housing, there's two nuts, and for those you'll need a 10 millimeter socket. Make sure you don't drop the nuts down the back of the engine. And lastly, the fuel clip that comes into the fuel filter, and that has an internal diameter of 15 millimeters. So here's some photos just to help explain things. So here you can see the fuel primer assembly and the air filter. These are the four clips that need to be undone on the air filter. Here's the fuel filter assembly and those are the two nuts we need to undo. Here you can see the fuel pipe going to the engine and we need to undo this Jubilee clip as well. Step one is remove the air filter assembly. So we need to remove the mass airflow sensor clamp with 8mm socket, disconnect the wiring harness connector from the MAF sensor and remove the air filter upper assembly which is held on with four clips. So we start by opening the bonnet, there's a little catch there that we just push to the left, up comes the bonnet, put it on its stay and now we can look at this air filter. So we're going to use 8mm socket here to remove this Jubilee clip that is on the mass airflow sensor. This is the mass airflow sensor connector. Push that down, pop it off. We've then got four clips that are keeping the air filter assembly together. One here at the back, one on the side at the back, and these two on the right hand side. So they just pop off. Now very carefully, without banging the sensor, remove it and put it to one side. Step two is remove the filter assembly itself. Disconnect the fuel hose to the engine, which is a seven millimeter socket, and plug the pipe. Remove the fuel filter assembly, which is held on with two nuts, and that requires a 10 millimeter socket. Disconnect the fuel hose to the filter using long bent nose pliers, and plug the pipe again. So now using my 7mm socket, this is a long version, I'm just going to undo this pipe where it connects basically to the engine effectively. So this is the main pipe to the engine. So we pull that off. Now what I wanted to actually check was whether the priming pump was working 
on the actual assembly because I had I've had some issues with this um, and the only way I can get fuel to come through is actually to use one of those bulb type primers so I'm just going to see if pushing on the plunger at the top actually delivers any fuel because I presume it should do and yet it doesn't seem to now I had a bit of a quirk here where the car wouldn't actually start and all it was was I think air was getting in somewhere around this area or on the primer plunger and then no fuel would get to the engine now ironically I spoke to the previous owners and they said if you park the Nissan facing downhill slightly you won't have a problem starting it which I thought was really quite odd but yes it does seem to be correct because all the time it's facing downhill slightly the engine starts no problem but obviously I would like to park it on the flat but if I park it on the flat air seems to get in and then you can't start it unless you reprime it hence I'd like to know whether this priming pump is working or whether I need to install one of these bulb type primers so just as a passing observation I'm not sure how clear diesel is but this one looks quite murky so I think that filter probably is well overdue so we'll plug this pipe here pop a jubilee clip on there and just pinch that tight and then we can work on those two nuts at the back with a 10 millimeter socket now be careful you don't drop these nuts they are in a fiddly place and I did manage to drop one but thankfully I had another spare one never found where it went which isn't so good so we just remove that last one and then what we've got to do is just tilt the filter over slightly and you'll see the incoming fuel pipe to the actual filter which is on the right hand side of the filter so there's not a lot of room it is quite awkward so here using a pair of bent nose pliers I just pinch that clip, bring it back down like so and then I'm going to plug that again with a slightly shaped wooden dowel where I've removed the flutes so then we can try and manoeuvre this assembly out I'm just going to have a good look at this make sure you don't spill diesel because the other side of the filter is still open so fuel could spill out I'm having a good look at this I don't think I've seen a diesel filter before by the look of it I'm taking it all in yep let's go to the bench to the bench we go and it's at the bench we find the disappointment but first let's empty this filter and see what's inside nice looks like we've got some organic material perhaps some algae something growing not pleasant so this might be the issue people talk about with biodiesel that it does encourage the growth of algae there's definitely something slimy inside this filter but that's not my biggest issue my biggest issue is this my new filter has a huge hole in it and my current filter has a small hole and it comes with its own little plug so something's amiss here so I'm now puzzled as to why the correct filter which I ordered which is the Bosch has a massive hole in the bottom 
So I'm going to remove this current filter because I just want to confirm that the actual fitting at the top is actually the same because I might have a completely wrong filter. But everywhere I looked it still said that the, fil the correct filter has a massive hole in it. So we'll have a look at this filter which is the current one. Watch for fuel spillage. Should have had a cloth down there. And I'm going to use a pair of verniers and just confirm that the actual top is of the same dimensions. Because I'm a bit puzzled here. So let's check the size of the seal on both of these. And they do tally up. So unless there's two types of different filters that fit the Nissan X-Trail. Fast forward seven days and one second hand fuel filter assembly. So you can see we've got a new fuel assembly there with the large plastic end cap. But first what I want to do is actually check the old one for like a vacuum test. So I'm going to take a piece of tubing here, heat the inside, compress it together with a vise, which should give me a nice seal. I can then put that onto the inlet side of the fuel filter assembly, like so. I put that on there, and then I can use a vacuum gauge just to see if we've got any leaks um, that might be causing the issue if the vehicle's left for a prolonged period of time on the flat. So let's give this some vacuum. And to my surprise, it holds a vacuum. Admittedly, I could have probably left that overnight. Well, we've got tw minus 20 inches of mercury there. And the plunger has dropped down. And when I release the water drain, the plunger comes back up. Like so. So it doesn't appear to have any air leaks. Yeah, the plunger doesn't seem to really plunge much. Um, so this mystery may continue, I think. Step three is replace the old filter. So remove the old filter by hand or with a strap wrench. Remove the old drain plug and drain remaining fuel inside. Replace the old O-ring with a new one and refit the drain plug to 4.9 newton meters. Fit the new filter and tighten a further two thirds of a turn after first contact. So be aware, even when you've drained the fuel, there will still be fuel inside, as I'm going to find out now. And we'll have a little bit of a diesel party. Here we go. There you go. I suppose it will help clean the vice at least. Get all that oil off the vice. So yes, you want to be careful with that. Ideally undo it in the vertical position. So, anyway, so that's our old filter taken off by hand. If it's really tight, you can use a strap wrench. So I've got my new Bosch one here. So And a new seal. I'm just going to put a bit of diesel on the seal. I mean, normally you'd put oil, I presume. Um, but diesel is a type of oil, isn't it? Diesel oil. So that should be fine. So we'll tighten that on two thirds of a turn. And then we get the old seal off, off the drain plug. And then we'll pop the new one on. Again, I'm going to just dip it in a bit of diesel fuel as a lubricant. So then Nissan say to tighten this to 4.9 newton meters. Put a little bit more diesel on there just to help the seal. 
So yeah, 4.9 Newton meters. Obviously, you don't want to over torque this because it is obviously plastic and you don't want to strip the threads. I would have thought hand tight would be probably around the correct torque. And wipe all that diesel up. Step four, refit the filter assembly back onto the car. So refit the fuel pipe to the filter using long nose pliers. Bolt the assembly back onto the bulkhead using a 10mm socket. Refit the fuel outlet pipe back to the engine using a 7mm socket. And finally bleed the air from the fuel line. So we can now put the assembly back into the car. And our first job will be to reattach the fuel line from the tank to the actual filter itself. Now on this one it's normally a spring clip, that's what it was originally. So I've just taken out the little dowel that I'd put in there to stop any debris going down. But because of the fear of perhaps there was a, a leak of some sort and air was getting in, I'm just going to change this to a Jubilee clip. Um, on the assumption that perhaps that, that spring type was getting a bit weak over time. Because I've never had much luck with the primer on this and I don't quite understand why. So we'll tighten this one up and then we can pop the assembly back onto the bulkhead of the car. Like so. So let's, let's get that back onto the bulkhead now. A little bit of fiddling around there. And then, so be careful you don't drop these nuts. They are quite awkward. And easily dropped. So this is a 10mm socket to do these up. And I don't think you need to go too tight. Just enough to hold the assembly in place. Okay, so tighten those up. There's only two. And that's the second one. And then we can reconnect the fuel line from the filter unit to the actual engine. And I've actually trimmed the end off this slightly. Again, just in case the end was perishing from age, just trying to give it a good tight connection. I only trimmed a few millimetres off. Okay, so now it's simply a case of priming it. And I don't seem to get far. It says push the primer until it gets hard to push. Well, nothing seems to ever happen. It just seems to go up and down, up and down, and I don't think it actually seems to draw any fuel into the filter. So I might try my old method using a bulb. So an added step five is to bleed the air using a bulb type that contains a one-way valve and works. So either my primer pump isn't working or I don't seem to know how to use it. Perhaps I'm pushing down the wrong way. I'm going to resort back to the primer bulb, which always seems to work. One, two, three, four, four, zero, zero, and then we have fuel coming out. Brilliant. So I'll just disconnect that now and pop that back onto the engine. So at least I know the filter now has fuel in it. I might give the primer a couple of pushes um, in the hope that it does do something. It may push the fuel in there. Because obviously there will be a little bit of air in there now. So give it a few pushes for good luck. Step six. 
refit the air filter assembly. So replace the top half of the air filter assembly, tighten the Jubilee clip using an 8mm socket, refit the MAF sensor wiring connector and reclip the four air filter housing clips back on. So I'm just going to put this Jubilee clip back on. There's a little hole there that goes over a dimple. I only took it off just to show in the earlier part of the video but normally you wouldn't take that Jubilee clip off. So anyway, so we put the housing back in again. So pop that uh, outlet pipe in, drop the filter housing down, pop on our MAF sensor clip with a nice click, and then just push the four metal clips up to lock the housing in place. Now I'll tighten this up with an 8mm socket Give it a shake and a quick pump for good luck. Step 7. Start the engine and watch it stop again. OK then, so that should all be ready to fire up now. So we'll pop round, jump in, let the glow plugs do their work. And off she fires. Brilliant. All looking good. Or maybe not. Let's try that again. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Now she's good. So I'll just drive it out the garage now. And I'll just check there's no fuel leaking and just leave her running for a little bit. Make sure she's not going to stall again. So she should run a lot better now. She should be getting a nice plentiful supply of clean diesel. I still can't seem to feel any pressure there when I push that plunger. Well, we'll leave it on the flat now and see if it starts in a week's time. Step 8. Let's cut the old filter open. Word of warning, never do this without wearing leather gloves. So I'm not sure how useful this exercise will actually be, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to cut this one open. So... Make sure you wear leather gloves because once this is cut it's going to be razor sharp. And so what I'm using here is a pair of Rothenburgers. Uh, I think they're like plastic pipe cutters. And they reach from about two inches to five inches outside diameter, which is about fifty to 127 millimeters in metric. So that's more than enough to cut something like an oil filter or fuel filter open. So you can pick these up on eBay quite cheap if you hang around for a bit, they do come up. Otherwise, if you to buy them new, they're something silly like over £200. And I think on eBay you can get them for about £50. Um, so it's not quite cut through there. I'm just going to just cut the little bit of bottom away there. And that was the wrong way. You had a 50-50 chance of turning it the right way and you turned it the wrong way. Okay, so that should be the final cut. Final cut. Was that Pink Floyd? Um... So right, we're open now, so very carefully. You really don't want to cut yourself on that. And there's the filter itself. And it only takes up half of the canister. And there's a rubber seal there at the bottom. Okay, and we'll open this up in more detail now. So there you can see the plastic drain plug at the end 
So we'll cut this open a bit further now so we can actually see the pleats of the filter. This proved to be not the best way and obviously it's one of the most dangerous ways of the risk of cutting yourself. So we'll go for 10 snips. A little bit safer this way. I'm not sure what we'll actually see when we do this. Um, I was wondering really if there was going to be any lumps of algae in there. And basically one side's very black and the other side's not as black. But no lumps of algae. Maybe cut the other filter open now. So on to the next filter. This is a blueprint. Now, I think the other one was a Mahal, which might be equivalent of a Bosch. So this is blueprint. So a slightly different construction. This is the one that came from eBay with my primer pump that I ordered. I ordered this just to get the plastic end cap. And this construction is different. So this is like a folded filter material and it's just rolled up. So I suspect that might be a cheaper method of making a filter over the pleated design. It is literally just a rolled up toilet roll. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure that the quality seems quite the same as the one that came out of the car. But anyway, so I've put a Bosch in there now. So hopefully it's got a quality filter. Not sure on that one. So here's some photographs for reference. You can pause these to view for longer. So this shows the fuel primer and the filter assembly. Those are the four clips you undo to remove the air filter. That's the fuel pipe to the engine. And there I'm removing the clip. And there's the primer plunger and the two bolts or two nuts at the back. And here's like an exploded view of all the parts. And this is the measurement between the centers of the primer housing. And another view of the primer pump. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.